Now, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. We have, I think, another interesting event for you. Uh, as the director of the Dino Patrizio Eurasia Center, I'm delighted to introduce this afternoon uh, Ms. Khatia Dikonaidza, the National Police Chief of Ukraine, a serious reformer uh, who did serious work in Georgia. I think you've all received her bio, so I'm not going to read it. Let me just say an established reformer who's come to Ukraine in order to continue that, that effort there. And with that, I will simply turn the podium over to her. And thank you for coming. Thank you, please. Thank you very much, Story and Story. It's a great honor for me to uh, be here and uh, represent uh, National Police of Ukraine. Uh, it's been a two days I'm in Washington uh, to seek more support for Ukrainian National Police. And I'm so happy that I have a feeling that, that we have more and more friends here and I'm sure that the, our story will be as successful as we want. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, so many people is talking about that I'm Georgian and uh, I'm a chief of national police of Ukraine. But believe me that the nationality doesn't matter for me and nationality doesn't matter for the people who really wants their police. Uh, I will tell you more, but right now I have to just show a little inspirational video how we started doing patrol police, how just we're going to reform the one of the most corrupted system in, uh, in the law, Ukrainian law enforcement system. And then we can continue and uh, discuss and I'm more than kind to answer all of all, on all your questions. Please, Vido. Я після того повернувся і вийшов і піде поліція. 
These guys and girls are my inspiration and they always stay my inspiration and the inspiration of new generation of the police and new generation of Ukraine. Let me talk about the story uh, that's inspired not only me, but inspired the whole Ukrainian nation. Uh, a year ago, uh, when, uh, when uh, the first deputy minister was appointed, Mrs. Ekaterina Zuladze, uh, of the Ministry of Interior. So we came as a team. We arrived in Ukraine as a team and we decided to fulfill our very ambitious plan. We decided to establish a newly patrol, new, new patrol police which replaced the most corrupted system of the traffic police, traffic militia, GAI. And probably you all remember them, the guys with fat guys with big bellies. And this guy just made this, this, this uh, uh, traffic militia for their business and they were grabbing money. They were grabbing money for 20 grivnas or 500 grivnas for ordinary citizens. So what we did, we just opened the call in Kiev and we collected about 34 thousand applications, young girls and boys, uh, with 90% uh, of them with high education, uh, just ordinary guys and girls, teachers, doctors, uh, just businessmen, and they went to, to, the, to the police and they wanted to become patrol police officers. Well, 4th of July, they began serving at the patrol police officers in Kiev. 4th of July, and you saw the video about the swearing process uh, in Kiev and uh, Sofis Kalposhet, and they began to serve and to provide service for the Ukrainian nation. I'm proud of it, our team is proud of it, and we will be proud of it, and you must be proud of it, because it's not only the success story of Ukraine, it's success story for the all mankind. Right now, the uh, short information that the patrol police officers uh, are operating, not only in Kiev, but they are operat operating in Odessa, Kharkiv, Lviv, Uzhgorod. Soon they will be operating in Lutsk. We're opening Dnipropetrovsk, and uh, up to May, we will be, they will be covering all Ukraine. 29 cities, and even the cities close to the ATO zone. It's Kramatorsk, Mariupol, and Severodonetsk. Yes, it was a story of success for Ukraine. It was a story of success for our team. It was a story of success for you, my partners, because our American uh, partners, we are so much involved in this process. But uh, after 7th of November, we began the second journey, a second adventure. I became the chief of national police, first chief of Ukrainian national police. And uh, despite the fact that, that these girls and boys are absolutely clean, uh, that they are fair and they are not taking bribes and they have absolutely uh, wonderful uniforms and wonderful cars. We, right now, we just are facing the biggest challenge to create the national police of Ukraine. What does it mean? It means that, that to create 130,000 fair and clean police officers. It is hard, it is very ambitious, but I we can done it, we can do it.
when uh, first when I met with uh, my colleagues, my deputies, they looked at me, and nobody asked the question, and they just asked. Uh, not not said, but you know, it was written in their eyes that uh, what can you do? Do you really imagine that uh, you can just change and reshuffle this old system? Do you really imagine that? Uh, do you really think that uh, you will be allowed to reshuffle the system, which was grabbing uh, and um, uh, taking bribes for 20 and 25 years? And you know what? Right now, after a month, we had been working together. The great part of them, they have this belief and they believe from their heart that, that we can do it together and we can just be the successful story like Patrol Police. Well, uh, you ask me, so how do you, what, what, what's your plan? So how, do you, how, how it is possible to create and to build up the new national police of Ukraine first in Ukrainian history? Uh, first plan. I decided to vet all militia officers. We appointed officers and the, um, at the temporary vacancies, and after the vetting, they will be reappointed at the permanent vacancies. What does it mean to be vetted? First of all, we have two phases of system, a vetting system. First of all, this is testing system, testing uh, like in general skills, because general skills uh, can check your analytical background, can check your analytical skills. And second is professional, professional tests. After, after this testing, uh, we created the re-evaluation and re-attestation commissions. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the, in this commission, commissions, there are three uh, members of the, the representatives of the Patri National uh, Police of Ukraine and the three members of the civil society. And uh, it's the first time in the history of Ukraine, first time, that the civil society take part in this revolutionary national platform to create the new structure of the national police. Uh, we, uh, we started vetting them in um, Kiev and Kievska Oblast, and it means that, that we have to vet about 13,000 people, and it's quite a lot. But, you know, uh, my ambitious plan is that, that, that to vet them, to vet probably 130,000 people in six to seven months. Why we did that? When I talked to my European partners, they said to me that, uh, Jesus, it, it, is, it is hard because nobody, nobody in post-Soviet history ever did that. Even just when we talked to, the, to our colleagues in Polish, they, in Poland, they said that, uh, yes, we use this vetting system, but we use this vetting system for only the general inspection. And why do we want to vet them all? And I answered, we want to vet them all because it's important that the people to understand that the we to return uh, credibility and the trust. After those guys uh, started uh, serving in Kiev and other cities, you know what, the, what, the, what was the rate of the trust? Like 86%, 86%. While the trust to militia was about six to seven percent. So, uh, and when people will understand that, uh, okay, they are wedded, okay, there are no corrupted, uh, corrupted police officers in the national police, okay, they are not police officers uh, who are covering drug and organized crime, who are covering uh, just uh, bad guys uh, and, and the traffic police, who are not covering, who are not covering like the uh, petty crimes, which was a weak petty crime, which was a quite, uh, quite uh, an example for, for the militia officers. And when they will believe in that, I guess that, that we will return our credibility. It's important. And I think that the vetting them all, I think that the involvement of the civil society is very much important. Second, uh, what we want to do is to create the middle-level managers, uh, middle-level managers group. 
uh, for the national police of Ukraine. What does it mean? Uh, you know, uh, when you are looking for a new guys and girls, when you are looking uh, for a new fresh blood to bring them at the national police, on any other governmental sector, it's hard. It's hard because uh, because you need the best one, but we decided we decided to create the so-called project uh, initiated personally by me, uh, the uh, Knights of Honors. What does it mean? Uh, we are looking for a professional, clean, free of corruption and uh, the people with good, good background. We invite them all in Kiev. We vet them. Uh, they are just uh, doing a lot of tests. They are doing a lot of training. And after the serious leadership courses, they will be just distributed to whole Ukraine, and they will be appointed as a manager as a managers of the uh, certain regions and the districts. Third, what we've done. Uh, when I came to the position, you know, first meeting, they showed me the nice statistics. Gorgeous one. And they told me, I said, what is that? And they told me that, uh, oh, this is statistics, how many criminal cases and files we have, how many we closed, how many we opened, uh, just uh, homicides, just uh, car kidnappings, et cetera, et cetera. I said, why do I need that? So you guys have 66% of the credibility, and you, you, you want me to believe that uh, you are successful? They said, no. So we dismissed statistics. And uh, I said to them that the number one effective tool to measure the effectiveness of the police is a trust. Second is a trust in business because you know how it was happening that the militia office was just knocking at the business door and saying, hey, hello, we are here. And you know why? Not because they were interested in what, what, what the business was doing. No, because they wanted to grab something. Trust in business and internal trust. Because nobody ever, nobody ever asked officers what you want, what you consider for your professional development, what you want in terms of just uh, for you, we must provide you, and what kind of and what type of person is your boss. Because I think that the personality, that the uh, police Police bosses, chiefs, must be managers in terms of to coordinate the actions between the different um, structures of the national police. We eliminated the statistics, and uh, after, after 100 days, and it's my concept of the 100 days, we will go to each city, each city, starting from Kiev, coming to Lviv, Kharkiv, Odessa, etc together with our, our uh, European and American partners, we will launch a uh, very big, huge uh, surveys and the polls, and uh, we will know the certain picture on ground, what people are thinking, what they want in terms uh, regarding police, and what they, what they believe or believe they or, or believe they or not. You know, uh, first of all, I must, um, I must be very thankful to the people and uh, to the professional one who really started believing in, in reforms. You know, because while doing patrol police, nobody believed. And nobody, absolutely. And me and Eka and our team and uh, this great team, when we came to the different rooms and just started asking the questions, they were saying, you really believe that the, the patrol traffic police will be free of corruption? I said, yes, we believe. Why? That's because, because they would have the good salaries, because they would have the good uniforms, and our American partners provide this uniform 511. They will have the dignity and that they will providing the service to the people. What does it mean, the new national police of Ukraine? It means that the, we will provide service to the people. It means that the, we will not be oriented on the punishment, but we will provide the service to the people. And we will know what our people wants to get from us. And we will know how much we can develop in terms of just uh, do the policing stuff. Uh, we uh, created uh, absolutely different 
approach for the general inspection office of the National Police of Ukraine. We uh, appointed the new chief of the general inspection. And you know what I think? I think that the general inspection must be the bridge between the civil society, ordinary citizens, and to the national police and to me. Because general inspection, it was like the service just operating on rumors. It was service just operating like the, you said that, and then he, he's gone, and somebody come into my room and said that, that he's bad, and he said he's bad. No, we don't want these rumors anymore, anymore. We want the general inspections to be oriented on the development, development of the national service, uh, national police of Ukraine. Uh, betting system uh, is very much important. What we do for the patrol police uh, was that uh, we created absolutely different approach of the testing and interviewing. Uh, for the national police, I asked my partners, Americans, Canadians, and, uh, and uh, Europeans, they provide technical assistance and we created so-called recruiting center independent recruiting center, which uh, recruits uh, vets uh, and measures uh, the quality of the recruiting inside the National Police of Ukraine. Nobody can ever say that the Chief Khatia de Kanoidze uh, fired somebody like the chief of Kiev police or, or I don't know, because just he was a bad person, no. Everybody now is saying that the attestation commission, uh, recruiting center, and the new standards, the people who are not adopted to the new standards, people who are not adopted to the reforms, people who are not adopted to me, because it, was not, it will not be my success story only. It will be a success story for the whole nation. They, are, they can't be the part of the national police. Uh, a lot of my partners are asking about the timeline and asking about the similarities with Georgia and Ukraine. And I know that, that this is a question for you too. If I say that uh, I will create a very good and the quality national policy in six months, nobody will believe me, right? But if I say that uh, if we will uh, change approach and if we, if we increase the salaries, we'll provide good uniforms, we'll, in, we'll decrease the petty corruption uh, and the, and the, um, uh, at the all levels. So then it's possible that uh, in two years, Ukraine will have the uh, police which is providing service to the people, which is oriented to the community policing and which is oriented of the on the security, security, and which is oriented on the serving and protecting. Thank you very much. Uh, I was told, uh, I've been told that uh, I have to uh, speak about uh, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So I, I, I think that uh, you have a lot of questions, so I'm ready to, to answer on all your questions. I have to sit here, okay. Thank you very much for the, for the film and for your comments. I will ask you two questions and turn it over to the audience. Uh, the first is um, a very general question. You spent your time talking about the traffic police. Mm -hmm. Do your responsibilities extend beyond the traffic police? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, to give you the general overview, what is traffic police? So I, I made a comment that the, 
uh, Gai, the most corrupted uh, system and the uh, system and the national and the militia and the Ministry of Interior was replaced with patrol police. And once they start operating in each city, so Gai is absolutely dismissed and demolished, right? So uh, patrol police is in charge of the traffic, yeah, uh, traffic security, uh, and uh, they are the block, so-called block of the public safety. Right now, we have about 6,000 patrol police officers, and up to May, we will have about 10,000 patrol police officers. But national police is much more broader than, uh, than patrol police, because uh, national police is in charge of, the, as I said, general inspection, monitoring the internal security and internal behavior of, the, of each police officer. Criminal police, criminal police, which is, uh, you know, just uh, operational agents and the uh, uh, police on Rounds. Also, investigation, uh, anti-drug unit, uh, econ uh, department of the um, economic investigating economic crimes. Uh, also, just uh, public safety block. So it's a huge, sorry, monster <laughs> that, uh, that 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 is very that is a backbone of the internal security of the country. Uh, but uh, I have to say that uh, when you are asking me, sir, about the patrol police and that, that what is beyond the patrol police police, uh, how we try to catch the standards. Here is patrol police and here is the rest. What I'm, I'm planning to do is to catch the standard of the patrol police. Why and how? First of all, I'm very honored and I'm honored just that the parliament and the president and the government supported me a lot. And uh, we increased, we will increase the salaries from January. Uh, probably the lower salary will be 6,000 krimnas. It's about $300 US dollars. Uh, while right now they have about uh, one, uh, one, two, five, uh, 2,500 krimnas. Uh, but it means that the, the lower salary will be 6,000 and it will be increasing just uh, regarding the gradation of the vacancies and the Officer, for instance, the patrol police will receive uh, receives uh, eight thousand. SWAT team will be receiving like uh, starting from twelve thousand to fourteen thousand. Investigator just uh, to nine thousand and more. And it means that uh, if I have good salary, it means that uh, I can feed my family, and it means that uh, uh, I can be free of corruption. But Without salary, I must say, and I'm, 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 always, I'm always speaking frankly, that our reform needs consistency. What that does it mean? Okay, they have good salary, but if I won't be able to give paper, if I won't be, gave, uh, give, uh, won't be able to give the, the cars, gasoline, uh, computers, so each police officer can go to the local businessman and said, ask that, okay, give me gasoline in, in, in order to just make a ride in some other place. Uh, so uh, what I asked uh, our American partners and what I've been asking with our Canadian partners and European partners is that, that to be the part of this revolutionary reform, to help me and this assist us in terms of that to, to, to keep the consistency because we need this reform. We must be the, and we are the first birds of the law enforcement, reforming the law enforcement systems, system. We are the first birds and that uh, we can be the locomotive of, of this train and we can be the first train. And I assure you, you know, this was a funny story that on Sunday, as uh, we can uh, speak about the resistance of the old system, on Sunday, uh, militianers, uh, old guys gathered in front of the national office, national headquarter of the national police, and they were shouting that, that this Georgian girl arrived here, and you know I'm so sorry, but she's uh, she's so unfair, and she wants to fire all us, um, and she wants to be the uh, just uh, the the most brutal person because you know just she's destroying our dignity, and you know what? And I, I said the same uh, the um, in the 
live show that uh, I'm happy and I'm proud that, that they came out and that they had been shouting in front of the National Police well, Headquarters. What does it mean? It means that uh, we are not a right route, and it means that uh, we're doing our job. It means that the uh, persons who are corrupted, as uh, persons who are not, uh, who can't be the part of the National Police, they can shout, but I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. So there is a resistance. But you know, uh, again, just similarity to Georgia and Ukraine. So it was a sensitive uh, it, to do the reform in Georgia. But Ukraine is much more deeper. Ukraine is uh, the, the scale and the country is so huge. And the third, we have a, we have a very challenging situation. And again, I want to insist and I want to just, uh, and I will be insisting it everywhere that uh, it's not like the reforming national police. It's like that uh, to choose between evil and good and uh, to, to walk on the Golden Bridge and Golden Bridge will be reforming Ukraine and clean through, uh, the corruption. Uh, certainly what you're doing is important and impressive. But I can't let you off so easily with those comments. So I'm going to ask you a question, which you may answer or you may not. All right? Uh, I think that um, an effort has been made in the Odessa Oblast to deal with problems of corruption. And I think that this has been thwarted by authorities in Kiev. Um, and there are two instances, but I'll only mention one because only one deals with the police. My understanding is that the uh, new police chief in the Odessa Oblast, who has a sterling reputation, who, like you, came from Georgia, um, had the corruption file, responsibilities for dealing with corruption, taken away from him. Do you have any comment on this? To me, this seems like a blow against corruption, the fight against corruption, in a place, one of the most corrupt places in Ukraine. Uh... You don't have to answer that. No, no, no. Uh, well, I will be... I will be um, I will be answering frankly, you know, first of all, first of all, as the first officer of Ukraine and first as chief and the first officer, I'm absolutely free of politics and I will be staying free of politics and any, any poli and free of uh, influential groups because it is good for the nation of Ukraine. Uh, this is this is first my comment. Second, I don't think that the, uh, that the fighting corruption is important only in Odessa or any other regions. Fighting corruption. You know what Vice, Vice President said when he gave an inspirational speech uh, in Verkhovna Rada, and it was, he was great, uh, he was great just uh, uh, with his speech, that uh, corruption is a cancer and we have to do our best in terms of to get rid of this cancer. I think that the corruption, uh, yes, it's a sick organism and we have to, and we, we have to create the more broad team in order to defeat the corruption. Well, uh, I don't think that in terms of policing and, and national police, Odessa Oblast and the new chief needs a special status because I am a person in charge of the national police and I'm the person first person interested in uh, interested in fighting corruption in, in a, any level, any level, not only Odessa, in Uzhgorod, in Lutsk, in uh, Kharkov, in Dnepropet Dnepropetrovsk, but I think that um, as I, I said to our uh, honor, honorable guests that uh, we have ambitious to be the first birds in the law enforcement system. I think that the, we must become like the virus and the spreading good virus can be very good for the immune system of Ukraine. That's my comment. I would agree with that, but when you have a good virus, you don't take them out of the fight. But okay, other questions? Uh, Ms. Dekanoidze, it was very interesting to listen to your insights, so I commend you on all the reforms that you have established. But having been uh, working on EU enlargement for a while, I cannot resist not to ask you how much has this reform been part of the European Commission's uh, visa liberalization action plan for Ukraine? And be since the report was not issued today for, today for Georgia and Ukraine, what is your expectations? Are you going to get a positive recommendation to get the visa regime lifted for Ukrainian citizens by June, hopefully. Yes, uh, 
uh, uh, as a as a the citizen of Ukraine, as a nationality by Georgia, of course, uh, I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the decision. Uh, but I must assure you that uh, our commitment, which is the commitment of the national police, and uh, we uh, and there is not a greatest part of the commitments of the national national police. The greatest part is the commitment of the Ministry of Interior, which is which is supervising not only national police, but also supervising the immigration service, uh, border services, uh, border service, etc. Uh, but I'm sure that the uh, again, uh, first uh, component fighting against corruption. Uh, this will be the, the main component of this visa liberaliz liberalization agreement. And I hope that in 2016, uh, we will be able to step forward. We will be able, I believe, as a chief, I can, I can uh, take any commitment and responsibility in this regard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Dr. you. Uh, hello, Ilya Ponomarev from, from Russia. Uh, and we in Russia watched very closely uh, the story in Georgia. And uh, your reforms in Georgia, even by Mr. Putin and Mr. Medvedev, were admitted as a success story. No doubt in that. Just not in public, but in private talks, always they said it's a success story. But then they said, we cannot spread it into Russia because Georgia is 4 million people, Russia is 440 million people. So uh, it's unscalable. Ah. So you right now is making this experiment, whether it's scalable for 10 times larger country than Georgia. So what's your answer to Russia? And what did you experience? What you had to do differently than you have done in, in Georgia? Uh, I'm sure that uh, you don't want to hear my answer to Russia, actually, and nobody, nobody does. Uh, but uh, but uh, again, this is not a question, uh, question um, uh, from our uh, from the Russian side, this is a question we, me, Eka, and our team just uh, have been getting all the time there. So yes, Georgia was tiny, and you were able to do because just uh, you, uh, it is so flexible, just the three and a half million. So it's it's nothing. At, but but, uh, and I also agree that uh, Putin uh, was the number one person knowing Georgian reforms very well. He personally was interested, and you're absolutely right. But I can assure you that the, we have successful example. Uh, it is patrol police. So it is example how step by step, consistency, will, political will, and that there was a Ukrainian, the political will of the president of Ukraine, government of Ukraine, parliament of Ukraine, uh, the Ministry of Interior, that uh, we have to create the free of corruption traffic police. And not only in Kiev, you know, just when, for, when um, uh, first we opened the uh, call in Kiev and we're, uh, when we received the 34,000 applications, we were sitting and said, what, what, 34,000, how we can apply them, how we can just, you know, redistribute them, but step by step. Uh, but, uh, uh, and the, the, the thanks God, thanks God, uh, the political will matters. So right now we will have patrol police in 10,000, uh, in uh, 10,000 patrol police officers in 29 cities. Again, when my partners and my, my close friends, even close friends, have been saying to me that the uh, Hatia, it's impossible to vet even single police and militia officers, so officers, it's impossible. It's very ambitious. Why do you do that? I said that no, we have a very good example how we have been choosing and uh, hiring uh, just patrol police officers. So I can say that the political will, good team, and the, the, the uh, real consistency in reform so and that we can create, uh, we can create another success story. But uh, also, I want to mention when we have started, and unfortunately we don't have this uh, on our video, but uh, when we have started the crea uh, creating of patrol police, several people, the members of our group, who, Nastya is sitting, she was the first, uh, uh, and uh, you know, young students came. 21, 22, 23, just volunteering. They came to ECTAP office because ECTAP office was uh, with the implementator of our pro program, I mean this uh, Patrupolis project. 
the young girls and boys cages, Dasha, Masha, Anastasia, uh, Vasya, Ivan, they came to us and say, we want to be the part of the team. And you know, just first, just we thought that they are too young, and then we, when we just saw their willing willingness, when we saw that they, they are real kids that really want to change Ukraine. So right now, they are the big members of our team. So society matters, mentality matters, and what I what I want to change in Ukraine is a mentality that the national police or the police is a person who is providing service to, to you and to the, to the citizens. So it's hard. It's a huge country, but we don't have any other choice. Okay, thank you. Melinda, then here and then here. Melinda Herring, Atlantic Council. I'm sorry, I think I mi might have missed something. Uh, can you talk about the old militia? How does that figure in with your plan? I understand you've hired thousands of new traffic police, but aren't th these new police officers going to be at odds with the militia? And how do you get rid of them eventually? Militia doesn't exist anymore. Uh, no, uh, on 7th of November, 7th of November, um, uh, National Police of Ukraine was born. Uh, on 4th of August, President of Ukraine, Piotr Poroshenko, signed the law about police, National Police. And 7th of November, our, uh, our baby, National Police, was born. It means uh, that the uh, automat it probably it looks like that automatically militia officers turn to be the policy officers, but no, that's what I'm telling you, and just uh, you know, just expressing myself in a very probably bad manner because I'm proud of it that uh, we appointed them on the temporary vacancies, and only after the wedding they will be appointed on the permanent vacancies. So no militia, and this is very much important for Ukraine, that uh, you know the militia, militia story is in the history right now. Back. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Umed Babakhanov, journalist from Tajikistan. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Saakashvili accused your chief minister of internal affairs of, cor of being corrupted. What do you think about Mr. Avakov, how clean he is, how honest, and, and the reasons of this Tough fight? Tough question, huh? <laughs> uh, Thank you. Uh, well, again, uh, uh, if I'm sitting here, I represent the national police. Uh, independent from the politics and independent from any political influences. And I'm proud of it. Not because that Khatia Dekano is a chief once in this way, acting this way. Not because that uh, it's very much important that the even single police officer to know that the, he is not, his place is not in the politics. That's first. Second, um, uh, I would not be comment any political history and process uh, going on in my country, in Ukraine. First, why? Because uh, my first interest is that the reform must be successful. Second, I hope that the everybody involved in this, in this reform uh, will just uh, do their best that the, our story to successful. And the third is that the even single police officer must know and must believe and must have dignity uh, to just adopt to our standards. And this means a lot for me. Thank you. Anders Åslund, the Atlantic Hello. Council. Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your relationship with um, the prosecutors. I read uh, recently about uh, uh, the stepson of a, a major businessman who uh, happened to kill uh, two people on the streets in the Kiev with his car when he was drunk. And he was taken by your wonderful policeman to, uh, uh, to be arrested. And the prosecutors realized that this was not a crime, so he was let out. How do you manage this, uh, that the prosecution has not been um, <clears throat> being reformed at all, and uh, isn't this demoralizing for your new uh, policemen when they are doing a good job and it does not lead to results? Thank you. 
Thank you. Funny story is that uh, they are not only just uh, writing fines uh, to the to the prosecutors, but you can't even imagine how many generals they did. they they just uh, stopped and they not arrest, but uh, they stopped uh, because of the violation, and that's good. And you know, if uh, from the beginning it was like the habit that uh, oh they stopped the uh, prosecutors or they stopped the generals of army or whatever, so it was uh, like the news. After several months, you know, just it became the ordinary story and everybody just understood that, uh, okay, they are stopping and they are, the, they are the, the, just the police of just cops, just cops, behaving just like cops, fair cops. Uh, the second funny story that uh, I live in Khmelnytsky Street in Kiev, uh, the corner of Franco and Khmelnytsky Street, and there is a small mob standing there, half legal, uh, so, and the, the girl sitting there, a woman sitting here, the, there, so she didn't recognize me and asking that, the, do you know where can I go for, for just uh, this, uh, to bribe police officers? I said, why? Because this new one, they don't take bribes, so I don't know where to go. <laughs> City hall or where? So I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Uh, but uh, it, is, it is like the, in, the, in the, the, the funny story and the funny history. But second, um, uh, I can't say, can't say that uh, we have bad relations with, uh, with the General Prosecutor Office. Why? Because it's our responsibility to be open and to be, to, because they are supervising all the uh, procedural and uh, investigation part of the National Police. Uh, second, uh, you are aware that uh, we have very nice Georgian in there, sitting there, and also doing the reform of the General Prosecutor Office, and uh, I'm happy that uh, he, he, success, he has successful story also. So, and third, sir, I know and I understand your question that uh, uh, just uh, only reforming the patrol police or the national police, it's, it's, it doesn't mean that the law enforcement system will be like, you know, working in a, in a very good manner. Uh, I am confident, I am sure, and probably you guys, are, you guys agree that uh, uh, to have the real internal um, high quality security, all branches of the law enforcement services must be, must be reformed and must work according to the standards that we, we, we acknowledge. And I think that uh, uh, it was again funny story, sorry, but um, when uh, uh, there was a demonstration in front of the national, uh, our national office in Kiev, one of our Facebook, uh, one of the Facebook users just uh, written down, and it was very funny because we were laughing about that with, with Denise, uh, that uh, uh, he was uh, saying that uh, I'd like to see some of corrupted prosecutors and the judges, you know, just uh, collecting and gathering in front of the this and the demonstrating that, that they are not happy. And uh, I will be happy as a citizen of Ukraine to see uh, my country free of corruption, free of the big cancer, which, which is a problem, not only, not only for, for Ukrainian nation, but also for, for, the, for the whole mankind. We're doing our best. I'm happy that the, in my reform government and the president is doing their best. And I think that, that it's a responsibility of each of us. Uh, please, we're here. And then you're after that. Good afternoon, Przemek Nowakowski, Polish Embassy here in Washington, D.C. I've got two questions, actually. Uh, one is related to your, what, uh, to what you just said, that the getting the right... One question, please. Yes, okay, that, that will be one question, okay. Uh, the getting the right manpower is very important, but um, they, it also takes time that they gain experience, the context the, the old policeman had, and street creed, like, like they say here. So I, I also, it's not a secret that the old policemen feel as some kind of resentment um, towards you and the Ukrainian state. And it's no secret also that uh, they often, with, with no jobs, they often become criminals and, and, and involved in some illegal activities. How do you plan to deal with that? 
how, 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 how's, what's your response to the, to the, 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 to the problem that m might constitute the fired policeman, the, the corrupted policeman? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, this question is kind of just replicating my, my, a lot of stories and a lot of answers. But again, let's talk again that uh, uh, when my colleagues, not only colleagues, but friends and my family also, uh, my, my father is very much interested in what I'm doing and he's very much worried, but he is asking all the time, so, okay, you're doing reform, but of course it's important to keep a balance because police is the number one internal security force, right? Uh, so, uh, and what I'm answering to them and what I will be answering to you, sir, is that uh, uh, right now the national police is a big boat, you know, floating in the storm. And I am a person and our team, we can't let this boat sink. No, we have to just let this boat just uh, move forward and just uh, discover new new lands and discover the new ideas and strategies. Um, I understand what you what you consider in order when you are saying that um, maybe they will be joining the the criminal gangs, etc. And what, what what's the difference if they were they were covering the organized and crime working at the police? or they will be covering and they will join the gangs. There is no difference, believe me. And uh, believe me that uh, if we will change middle-level managers and high managers, we, and, uh, we can just destroy, destroy the story that, the, for instance, only one person can keep the balance or keep security in one city in Kiev, for instance. No. This is like the story, old story, Soviet story. We are not building the uh, governmental institutions, you know, just hanging on one person for on Khatia or the one chief of Kiev uh, police or law police. No, we are building the governmental institutions, like in Georgia. Probably you are aware that the, we build police and that this police, no matter what is going there, no matter what kind of just uh, relations and what kind of just uh, um, um, just uh, concerns we have, right? Or you have, sir, the government, the police still is operating. Uh, my ambitious is that uh, to create the governmental institution. Because if I leave, if I survive, if I leave, uh, that the, it must be the strong, tough institution balancing with the different people inside, balancing with, with good functions. For instance, um, uh, again, uh, right now we have uh, um, uh, at the national police in the structure, there is a criminal police and there is an investigation. Uh, investigation the independence of criminal police, just the operational agents, you know, just rolling around in the streets and doing their jobs, etc., etc. So this is absolutely Soviet system. Probably soon we'll be initiating the new law in the parliament uh, and uh, we will be just talking to our partners in order to, they, to provide the assistance and create the so-called detective groups because investigators and criminal, I mean operational agents, it's Soviet system. We have to merge them in order that, that they to work together as a team. So good functions, good responsibilities, I'm just repeating but I must repeat, good salaries uh, and the belief and the trust it's important because if a police officer has a dignity, there is a fire in his heart, you know. When we, me, uh, we were talking to the patrol police officers, when they just started to ha had to start operating in the street, uh, we had been saying one word, not one, several words, that uh, you can become the good officers from your heart because you have to have the fire here, but you have to work from your uh, head. So I think that, that this good combination will help us. Thank you. Question over here. Dobro hodnia. 
Hello. <laughs> Uh, the aqua view, uh, ban zavash reused. Uh, My Ukrainian is not so good, I'm yeah, so ashamed, but <laughs> still. Anyways, um, I was practicing that all day, I was trying to impress you. Anyways. <laughs> We can practice together, so, yeah. Anyways, um, my name is Patrick Bell. I'm from the GMNA um, Center for European Excellence at Florida International University. Over Thanksgiving break, I was on a lecture tour of Ukraine, and one of the things that I did was give a seminar to women in Kharkov, about 25 young women, both aspiring and current office holders, and I was impressed by two things. First of all, their knowledge of the American system, which I'm sure is a lot greater than any American's knowledge of the Ukrainian system, and second of all, the, their conflict resolution skills. So um, my question is this. Um, it appears, at least from uh, um, preliminary analysis, that about 25% of these new officers are female, which, as you know, is like vastly greater than you know, has been before. So how do you see the role of women, in particular, in reforming the basically the, this new system and implementing this new uh, Ukrainian National Police? A brilliant question, uh, because uh, I'm a big fan of women uh, myself. Uh, well, um, uh, as probably you are aware that uh, I had been the director of the Police Academy of Georgia, and uh, I had been working in the police of Georgia, and all my uh, professional life, I uh, I was trying to increase uh, the women role in uh, women's role in at the police, and I'm more than happy. You saw those girls. I mean, pushing, doing some push-ups, and we're so happy that the, you are right that the 27 percent of the women uh, are are percent of the pat new patrol police officers are women. Uh, that's not because it's uh, gender balance. Yeah, we need gender balance for the, some kind of information and reports. No, 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 not only because they are so effective in com in the, with the communication with people. They are so effective when they are stopping like drunk people and talking to them. And they are so effective, you know, just talking to the kids, talk at schools, talking to the um, uh, just hard guys uh, at the streets. And I can say that uh, I will be doing my best in order to increase the uh, uh, um, percentage, even not only in the patrol police, traffic police, but also at the rest of the, the national Police. Uh, behind you, uh, the wonderful lady Natalia is sitting. She's, uh, she's my strategic advisor. She's from Canada and she was a chief of one of the districts of Montreal. And you can't even imagine, imagine just the, when she wears her uniform, she's so tough and strict. Uh, right now, Right now, she works. Uh, she works uh, at the European uh, Union strategic mission in Ukraine, and I personally was admired with her skills as a woman police officer. Believe me, that together with Natalia, together with Anastasia, who is uh, somewhere here, and uh, he came to us, to me and Eka, when she just a year ago just uh, knew absolutely just uh, not nothing about the policing. Uh, together with these, like you know, several thousand police uh, officers, women, we can go, we can we can go forward and we can do a lot of good stuff. I think that the women are important, and you know, just recently, what I've done, uh, I appointed the chief of Kharkov Patrol Police, a woman, young girl, Ola, and uh, she's doing great. I call her every day and asking stuff, and she's like, "Yes, I'm okay. Don't worry, chief." So, and I'm so happy about her. One more question. Molly. Thank you, Molly McHugh. Um, I've hi, Molly. Hi. How <laughs> I've worked are in, you? With, in Georgia with the UNM for a long time and with uh, Saakashvili's former government. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm also writing for the Washington Free Beacon. Um, I wanted to ask you about your comment uh, about the patrol police being a boat sort of floating along and you sort of Not have to keep Not only patrol it. police, national police. Well, I know, but, but the police sort of being this boat of reform, um, which I think is a good image of um, what's happening in Ukraine. And I was wondering if you could sort of 
in both Georgia and Ukraine, the, the changing of the police um, at the beginning was very symbolic. You have new untrained officers. They look really good. They have new cars. They annoy the old police because they drive around and keep them from sitting around taking bribes on the side of the road. Um, but it is the, the symbol is very important. And I think there is a political difference in Georgia versus Ukraine. In Georgia, you had a class of reformers in charge of a revolution that went into the government and worked for a decade. In Ukraine, the people most connected to this revolution are not in the government. They're still out in the streets, and it's a very big social movement, um, and they're watching and waiting. And right now, the police are sort of this boat of reform moving along, and people are hopeful that this is a symbol of what's to come. But um, do you think there is enough connection between the people who really felt themselves connected to the revolution in Ukraine and the reforms that are happening now? And do you think there's the political will to move forward with the type of radical, quick reform you've been able to implement in the country in other areas as well? Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Molly. Uh, I know that uh, you understand the whole reality, and you understand it in Georgia, and you understand it very well for Ukraine regarding. But I want to just give you information. Just recently, Ekaterina Zuladze, she received the prize of uh, the um, uh, Great thinkers, right? Thinkers. thinkers. Yeah, you know why? Well, you know what kind of uh, awards she received? In installing and integrating Maidan spirit into the patrol police. 90% uh, of these young, uh, young uh, girls and boys, they are, they are from the streets. A great percent of them, they are standing in, they had been standing in Maidan. Uh, Chief of Kiev Patrol Police, Yura Zazulia, who is like typical Ukrainian guy, this, you know, just like here, he, I mean, I don't know what it's called, like uh, this here, like, like this, but he is typical Ukrainian guy, and he was standing, standing in Maidan so long, and then he came, and he did not believe in, in militia, of course, he hated him, but he came to Patrol Police. I understand what you ask. I understand that uh, it's important for, the, for any kind of reform to have this uh, political will. But until now, what I see is that the political will from the president, government, and the parliament uh, is, uh, exists because they, they see that the reforming national police create, create creation of the uh, police that is oriented on the giving service to the people is a very big challenge and very important for the whole nation. This is one. Second, uh, when we are talking about the one part of the reforming and, uh, you know, just of the police in Georgia for, and the second part, I mean, not. Uh, again, I, I, I will state that the why I began this uh, probably uh, the most uh, difficult journey of vetting each militia officers while turning them into police. I want to return credibility, not to return, just to gain credibility and the trust, because it's important. And I think, Molly, that uh, if we have, we will have this strategic thinking, if we will have this correct concept and the good advisory from our partners, I think that uh, we can succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Police Chief. Um, you're not you have our best wishes. We know you're doing wonderful work. And I'm impressed by your political skills and sidestepping difficult questions. <laughs> Thank you.